Hi, welcome to the next fireside chat from my kitchen here in King Carden. It's good to be with you again uh, uh, through the electronic recording that we have on our YouTube uh, channel. Uh, a big thank you to Judy Zerubic, who was on the other side of this technological link as she records us and makes all the technological wizardry take place. And a thank you to Terry Boyd, who renders this for us to be able to put on our YouTube channel. As usual, I like to start with a little bit of humor because I'm a bit of a goof. I know that there are some during this pandemic who actually seem to be losing weight, although I would not classify myself in that category. For someone like me, here is my dream. Another group of people are exploring the possibilities of cooking new recipes. However, we shouldn't follow the instructions too literally. Besides, with all the extra home cooking, we might be wearing out our kitchen equipment. And no, you can't smoke those pots. For still others, the news is overwhelming without a little extra help. In the new public facility, in the few public facilities now open, new challenges present themselves for men in the washrooms. <laughs> Talk about long distance. Our pets are struggling too, even though we are around a lot more than we used to be. And of course, our grocery shopping practices have had to change. For those of us working hard at our gardening, there may be some new technology we don't appreciate. I'm thinking of you, Krista. <laughs> Through all of this disruption, many of us may wish that we could just rise above the emotional toll each day because that toll is taking a lot of us in different ways. We might believe that ignoring the realities with which we have to live is the best choice as we grow tired of the daily flood of worry, of the upsetting of our familiar routines, of the longing we feel when we just want to hug our family and friends, of the times we feel sorrow and loss, of tears that just seem to come unbidden to our eyes. Through all of these experiences, we just want to forget to close our eyes to imagine we are in a different place, a place where we can make our, uh, to our own liking, a place out of the storm. Now, I don't believe that God wants us to create a fantasy. Instead, I believe God is calling us to live in the storms of life creatively, looking out for one another. Instead of rising above the storm, what if we noticed others trying to deal with the same storms with which we are living? What if we shared shelter in the midst of the storm? What if we built community which creates such spaces of shared companionship instead of unachievable fantasies? Consider this statement by Roman Catholic Franciscan priest Richard Rohr. What if we just embrace our current reality and make our here and now the very thing for which we pray when we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven? What might that look like? What might it be like if we decided to do one small part I was wanted 
the red cape on my back I always wanted to be the best in my pack I always wanted to be known to be good To be the hero of my own hood If I could just fly, I could save everyone Stop all the wars so nobody's gotta run All the killing, all the crimes, pain and suffering It's getting tougher to be buffered from it all Are we gonna make it through? Is he gonna fly back in? Cause if he don't come right now will win time is running now do we want to wait for him or is it our time now to bring the good back in we don't have to leave tall buildings in a single file there's a lot of good that we can do we don't need a jetpack soon it's up to me and you was created by Nemo Patel and Daniel Nahmud. The lead rapper, Nemo Patel, went from an Ivy League education to Wall Street to fame and fortune as an MTV rap star. At some point along Nemo's journey, he realized that he was walking a path of suffering and that the only path to light was through selfless service to others and through his own internal purification. For the past 10 years, Nemo has been serving and working with marginalized communities in the Gandhi ashram in India. Most recently, Nemo has reconnected to his roots of music and is offering this gift of love, peace, and oneness through his songs, an offering he calls Empty Hands Music. 
Nemo chose the title Empty Hands because of the profound wisdom we all can gain when we understand this deeper truth, that when we arrive on this planet empty-handed, and we will soon leave empty-handed. So then, how and in what spirit do we want to spend the time in between? Notice that he too wanted to be the one to rescue people like Superman. However, the fantasy of superheroes swooping down to rescue us abdicates the very agency God gives us. We are co-creators of our own reality. We are the ones to create with God the world we want. As Nemo sings, I can do my little part here before I die. I may not win the Nobel Prize, but at least I can try to be a little more kind, spend a little more time. It might change one life. In 1969, when black citizens were still not allowed to swim in community pools alongside white people in the United States, back, of the, back in the years of in-your-face segregation, Mr. Rogers invited a black police officer on the show. Mr. Rogers asked the police officer to join in and cool his feet in a small plastic pool breaking a well-known color barrier. This kind of small action reminds me of the lyrics in Nemo's video. Small things can change the sound and vibe of the spirit that could change a town. And started small, now it's touched a crowd. The crowd is growing. Now the word is out. If all do our parts, we can touch the clouds without a cape and a mask. We can touch the clouds. Consider this image of police officers in Florida joining the protesters decrying the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. They are mirroring the previously ridiculed actions of former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick to demonstrate they are beginning to understand Kaepernick's point about police brutality. This small gesture shows that change is possible. Consider this picture taken Sunday in Flatbush, Brooklyn, when the protesters were about to be rushed by police forces in all their riot gear. One white member of the crowd shouted, white people to the front. In mere seconds, Hundreds of white people marshaled at the front of the crowd, forming a barrier between the security forces and the many black and brown bodies. The white protesters held their ground and turned a potentially violent confrontation back into the peaceful protest it had always been. Once again, I remember the words of the video. It's the smallest things that make a difference and the power is locked within us. All we gotta do is find the key and turn the latch and set it free. We don't need to be fast and strong because a kind word can go a long way. Help someone whose faith is gone to get back up and carry on. Maybe it's too hard to understand, think it's too much for us to handle, but I promise that you can because you don't need to be a Superman. Remember that Jesus taught us love makes a difference. It is love. Self-sacrificing love lived through passionate loving kindness that changes the world for the better. This is how we make heaven on earth. There is an indigenous story from the Hopi nation. It goes like this. The creator gathered all of creation and said, I want to hide something from the humans until they are ready for it. It is the realization that they create their own reality. The eagle said, well, give it to me. I will take it to the moon. The creator said, no, one day they will go there and find it. The salmon said, I will bury it on the bottom of the ocean. The creator said, no, they will go there too. 
The buffalo said, I will bury it on the Great Plains. The creator said, they will cut into the skin of the earth and find it even there. Grandmother Mole, who lives in the breast of Mother Earth and who has no physical eyes but sees with spiritual eyes, said, put it inside of them. And the creator said, it is done. Just as Jesus taught us, we are made for love by the one who is love. Therefore, in love, we can change the world if we dare, if we have the courage, if we trust in the good news Jesus shared with us. To quote the video one last time, when we act together out of love to help others, we unleash our superpowers. We are strong together. I want to begin our prayer today with the words of Bede the Venerable. Bede was an English Benedictine monk at the Monastery of St. Peter and its companion Monastery of St. Paul in what is currently Tyne and Ware in coastal northeastern England. I will complete the prayer with words written by Wendy Johnston. As we pray, I want to put this image on the screen. Consider this image as the sunrise in the midst of a whirlwind of the Spirit's movement among us giving us the courage, the daring, and the strength to act together in love to unleash our superpowers. In our loving, God's will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's pray. Christ, our morning star, splendor of light eternal, shining with the glory of the rainbow, Come and awaken us from the grayness of our apathy, renewing in us your gift of hope. Tongues of fire have lapped Minneapolis and other cities this past week. The cordons of law are gathered to repel, to push down, but the ashes of racism stain our institutions and our souls. I can't breathe. The sound of your Pentecost wind, O oh God, is getting louder and it is gale force. It's filling our screens, our news feeds, cracking open a wild, uncontainable tornado. I can't breathe. Shattered glass, broken windows, and broken promises to protect and serve are sweeping like wildfire over the police station and past the church. It won't stop now, loving Christ, and we feel helpless. I can't breathe. A community disoriented, cities broken, crowds inflamed. It overwhelms us all. The flames are breaking sound barriers while the fire that dances on our heads has moved to our hearts. And we cry, enough. Your holy fire has moved to our bellies, fired our passions. A policeman kneeled, but not in prayer, and we feel desecrated. I can't breathe. People from all over the world are gathering their rage, speaking different languages, but uttering the same words. We all understand the need, yet we cower from the task. We hear them in our own language. We hear their hearts. We hear their pleas. You promised us that you would pour your spirit on every kind of people, men and women, both, black and white, both, young and old, both. This Pentecost fire, this raging wind, this blowing us into making change, it has to mean something when a man says, I can't breathe. Give us the courage the strength, the daring, so our collective voices are no longer a whisper, but a shout of transformation as we listen to them. May it be so, in Jesus' crucified name. Amen. Once again, it has been good to be with you all. I'm, I'm constantly amazed at the work and the witness of so many in our family of faith. 
to celebrate the ministry we have as a congregation, I'm inviting everyone to consider giving an extra gift to King Carden United Church. There are many avenues to give listed on our website at www.concordanunitedchurch.org. So if a total of over $2,000 is raised by June 14th, I will recreate the Yule Brenner look that you see on the screen and go billiard ball bald, uploading a video of the process to our YouTube channel. Just mark your, don your donation, Gord's haircut, and then we'll know how to direct it. Now go, as a people gathered by the sender of love, upheld by the one who came in love, set out in the power of love. Go in peace, and one little action at a time. Know that we change the world. Amen. Until next time, farewell.